Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, Certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Historically, organizational leaders only needed to worry about getting the best out of their individual capability piece of the value chain to assure at least some success in their domain. As disruption has manifested itself almost everywhere, those same functional leaders have today needed to understand their context more fully and explore how to extend it to adjacent capabilities in their industry value chains. The future brings yet greater uncertainty and a fuller systems thinking approach is necessary. Why? Well, those same functional leaders are being compared and measured against their predecessors' performance, who are often the ones now doing the measurement. To even achieve basic parity in terms of success with their predecessors, they will now need to understand the full contextual environment they are in and the associated changes over time with new and adapted value-based ecosystems. Business people as well as IT professionals can ill afford to regard these ecosystems as a series of greyed out boxes of out of their immediate concern. Understanding the architecture of these ecosystems affords meaningful discussions of benefit to all participants. Welcome everybody. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday and uh, my thanks to you all for joining us uh, and my thanks as ever to uh, Paul Holman um, of IBM for his EA Minute. His, his, uh, his thoughts um, have been, uh, have been uh, uh, both uh, useful and amusing over the, uh, over the various episodes that we've had so far. Um, so my thanks again to Paul. Um, it's great to have you with us. Um, this will actually be the last um, regular version of Toolkit Tuesday for this season. Um, we will have uh, watch out at the end for what we're going to do for the uh, season finale. Um, but um, we're, we're uh, in two weeks time on the 15th of August. Um, we will have a, I'll say a little more about it, but we'll have a, a slightly extended version um, as our as our season finale. But this this whole um, uh, activity of Toolkit Tuesday, this broadcast has uh, has been um, well, it's been fun, it's been entertaining, it's been um, a, a, such a great thing to do, and we've reached thousands of uh, of individuals over the. Uh, over the various episodes and the three seasons now, I think it's we've, that we've been doing it. It's kind of taken on a life of its own with the, it just shows there are so many um, uh, tools that we can talk about and so many topics of interest that, um, that keep people coming back. So uh, it's been, it's been great. Um, and today is a great topic. We're focusing on our IT for IT standard today, a little more about that in a moment. So just uh, the usual housekeeping item, um, if you would like to ask a question of the uh, speaker today, then please try to do that in the Q&A channel uh, as opposed to the chat channel. The Q&A channel you'll find if you click the three little dots in the bottom, uh, bottom right hand corner of your screen, that'll give you the chance to click Q&A and please ask them in there. But as usual, please use the chat channel um, for communicating with other attendees. In particular, we love knowing where you're joining us from. Where in the world are you joining us? We had a, a, a virtual event of the Open Group last week, and we had people from 33 different countries. So um, it's uh, always great to see the, uh, the, the global spread and, uh, and how folks all around the world are interested in uh, what's going on here. So... Um, please, uh, please do that. I can see that starting up now in the chat channel. So 
Thanks for doing that and thank you for joining us. And in particular, thank you for joining us today to our main speaker. We will have um, uh, 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 Rob Akershock from DXC will join for, for Q&A uh, as well, who will be known to uh, quite a few of you probably. But our main speaker today is Luke Bradley, who is the head of, I of the IT for IT platform engineering at Vodafone Group Services. Luke has been leading architecture and platform engineering teams in the Vodafone Group for the last eight years, having worked in technology for more than 20 years. He is accountable for a multitude of group-wide transformation projects spanning topics such as ITSM, observability, CICD, analytics, portfolio planning, identity and access management, and more. And today, Luke's going to talk to us about how the Vodafone Group is using the IT for IT standard as a blueprint for their new digital operating model, supporting their digital digital transformation journey. So a warm welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, please, for Luke Bradley. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Steve, for the introduction. Uh, I think your colleague has handed, up, handed me over the ball, so that's great. Um, so by the way, everybody, uh, thank you for joining. Um, to uh, I'll, I'll jump rather quickly into things. Uh, what I'll be talking to you today, around, today is around how Vodafone uh, are using IT for IT to enable DevSecOps at scale. Um, bear me here, just fighting with my cursor. Um, so a big part, I think everybody will have a, has a pretty good view on, on who Vodafone is. Vodafone is one of the largest global telecom providers. I think it's maybe the fourth or fifth largest telco in the world. With, and, and, you know, we're, we're globally distributed across a, a variety of, of geographies. Uh, as part of our Tech 2025 strategy, we have a, we're doing a vast amount of work to both in-source, uh, what has been contracts that have been outsourced over the last 20 years. But as part of that in-sourcing, we have a huge aspiration to enable a lot of platform development within the organization. And with that, and again, if you type in Vodafone, you'll see uh, a lot of media coverage everywhere. With that, we have a, an aspiration to, to onboard in excess of 7,000 developers uh, in the coming few years. Uh, and to also get to a position where close to 50% of, of our technology staff base, which is you know in excess of, of 35,000 globally, that whereby 50% or at least 50% of those come from a, a software engineering background. Um, I work within digital IT, within Vodafone Group Services, or within Vodafone Technology, and you know we see ourselves as, as a huge part in how Vodafone will achieve, achieve that ambition. Bear with me here, let's change slide. So to touch on, to, 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 to provide a bit of more context on the organization that I come from, and maybe to give a bit more context on, on the problem. So I work within an, an internal, uh, service provider within within Vodafone Group called Technology Voice, where we are an enormous organization that has grown rapidly over the last few years. In the last maybe seven years, we've grown from close to 1,500 people when I joined to being in excess of 15,000 people now. And what we aim to do is, is to support Vodafone in achieving its Tech 2025 vision through a, a multitude of levers. So around, you know, helping one of the big focuses that we have is differentiating ourselves through software engineering, you know, really facilitating and accelerating our, our, our in-sourcing ambitions, whereby we, we maintain a sustainable knowledge and long-term knowledge base within Vodafone, where we modernize delivery. So that's in adopting more and more modern practices, whether it's DevSecOps, whether it's scaled agile, uh, and in particular site reliability, you know, site reliability engineering from a culture and mindset perspective. Uh, and then at the same time that we really look to leverage our scale, B being an organization of 15,000 people, you know, there's a vast amount of talent and skill in the organization. And what we really want to do is to make that available to Vodafone, in a, a, you know, on demand as required in an agile manner. Fighting our cursor. Uh, to introduce myself a bit further and to introduce the, the organization that I sit within. So, I work uh, or I head up a function called IT for IT Platform Engineering. We have over the last three or four years really tried to embrace the basic principles of what IT for IT targets. Uh, and what we've recently done is we branded ourselves uh, around IT for IT Platform Engineering, whereby we've taken global accountability, both within our technology voice uh, function that, that I'm specifically reside within, but also in the context of our broader digital and IT function. 
uh, and, and our overarching ambition is to is as, as the title of the, the, the presentation is is effectively to enable DevSecOps at scale. Uh, you guys will obviously be familiar with Rob Akashok. Rob would, would regularly and quite facetiously you know, infer that DevSecOps in some organizations, depending on how, how things uh, progress, are at risk and can become the next silo in a modern organization. And um, what we were what we're really trying to head off is is making sure that that that, that we can uh, avoid that type of risk. Um, to give you a bit of flavour in terms of, of of the scale, so as I mentioned, um, Vodafone, um, you know, in our technology organisation, we have four in excess of thirty five thousand people. Tech Voice is in the region of fifteen thousand people, and in terms of our platform as well, I talked today or I'm on the slide we talked about supporting. 46 platforms, the, the way I try to look at it and the so the social contract, if you will, that I have with our with our stakeholders is that we try to unburden them with managing some of the platforms that would enable scale development. So instead of individual teams having to worry about you know monitoring services or monitoring capabilities, whether it's logging, cloud monitoring, etc., instead of having to build their own automation tools, what we try to work with them is to one is take that burden off them, bring them through the, the life cycle financial security approval processes, get the platforms up and running at scale and establish them in a in a in a in more of a collaborative and democratized operating model so that the 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 people using our platforms, but in particular our engineers, that they can instead focus on creating value as opposed to messing around, to be honest with with what is ultimately duplicated in silo work. And so in terms of why do we exist? Um, um, so I mean, you, I think I'm pretty sure everybody will have seen this slide before. So, you know, I think everybody's aware that the, the overall operating model in IT um, and, and the types of challenges that an organization needs to cater for is, is, is evolving rapidly, right? I mean, Vodafone as an, is, is an enormous company, you know, there are, external trends in technology, there is an ever evolving set of working practices. They're both, I think they're both forcing us, but also facilitating a change. Uh, and I'll be honest, so much change is happening uh, quite frequently with, with, you know, essentially major paradigm shifts happening on a regular basis. And we, we have collectively concluded that, you know, we must evolve, we must respond to this, we must be at the forefront of this in order to attract and retain talent but also as a business in order to, to, to properly leverage sort of the, ver the variety of emerging opportunities. And look, to be honest, it, you know, it isn't easy. It isn't hard. If you look at this, at this visualization, uh, I'm particularly fond of this visualization, um, you know, you know, you know, and it really does a good job at, at, at talking about, um, at talking about how and highlighting how difficult it is to evolve an operating model, you know, when this is the reality uh, of the landscape. Um, you know, I, I've given maybe a, an indication of the scale of the platforms that we run. Uh, maybe, you know, I think it were including public cloud, we're in the region of about 75,000 infrastructure elements under management. We have about 120,000 end user computer elements under managed and about six or under management and about 6,000 IT services. You know, when you combine Silo working, siloed working practices with that level number of services in a federated global operating model, overlaid with a tooling ecosystem or, or a capability ecosystem like that, that the level of complexity is, is exponentially larger than what's accentuated here. And you know, we encountered it, and I suspect everybody encounters it. You know, it's extremely difficult for a senior leader to identify, you know, a really effective path. Out of this spaghetti, you know, this this this, this real this, this complexity, um, in modernizing the sort of the digital management landscape in what in that brownfield environment, you know, there are countless legacy constraints and challenges existing in, in large enterprises that enable us that 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 aspirational target of 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 achieving flow. And you know, when you combine it with with this view, and, and obviously, I think anybody who's familiar with Rob's presentations will be aware of this as well, or will have seen this. You know, the the vendor landscape is absolutely large. There are an abundance of suppliers in the market, and and there are increasingly 
uh, ever starting to horizontally expand into other areas. As an architect or a, from an as an enterprise architect brand, or architecture background, I'm often find myself lamenting or wishing that they they would sort of stay in their lane a bit more as they bleed laterally. And I think you know to really accentuate the problem, this, the emerging field of generative AI, uh, you know, it's probably the perfect example of the types of challenges that the senior leaders of digital IT for, or digital and IT face. You know, it's not. It, there's no question as to whether those capabilities and those emerging technologies, there's no question as to whether they will add value. But I think that the question is, how do you actually really benefit from the potential? How do you, you, know, how do you really benefit from the, 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 the use cases, the productivity gains, but how do you do so in a, in a scaled and sustainable, sustainable way that addresses cost, privacy, security, intellectual property when it comes to generative AI? You know, how do you really leverage that as opposed to just layering on another set of silos, another layer of complexity? Um, and I think those silos, um, you know, the silos can be very enticing sometimes, but in the reality is they, they enable agility in the short term while ultimately strangling the agility of, of the organization uh, in the long haul. And, and, you know, that again, that aspirational target of flow that aspirational target of transparency and traceability across the stack, that becomes obviously more and more difficult with, with every layer of complexity. You know, and tying some of those challenges back into Vodafone, right? And, and, and in terms of, you know, what does digital IT and Vodafone need to respond to? And, you know, the reality the telecoms industry is, 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 is evolving, you know, just like in tech, just like in various other industries, there are risks of disruption all over the place. You know, in reality, Vodafone needs to give our customers what they want, uh, and they need to give it faster and sooner. And uh, you know, we need to position ourselves for 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 sustainable but maximizing our growth opportunities, and we need to really simplify and, and remove the complexity that acts as barriers to 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 engaging and and, and you know purchasing and using our services. And in digital IT, I think we are seeing ourselves, and more and more in the telco industry, I think digital IT are seen as as being uniquely positioned as a way to differentiate ourselves among, among our customers and to really deliver the outcomes and the experience that that, that our customers want. Vodafone, we see, in Vodafone, we see ourselves as a, a premium service provider where customer experience, where ease of use is, is a major part of what we want to do. And, you know, and what we and what and it's how we want our brand to be seen. And digital IT enables so much of that. Um, that you know, so it's absolutely critical that we respond. Right, let's change my slide here. So to to build on uh, to build on 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 those types of challenges and what's happening in the industry and what Vodafone really specifically need to to, to respond to. And why did we go down the direction of IT for IT? Uh, Charles, I, I, I'm going to keep this quite simple, quite practical. Uh, we can get quite aspirational or quite abstract in, in some of this stuff. But at, at its heart, so much of what I've talked about, so much of what the industry needs to solve, so many of what, so much of what we want to achieve in Vodafone, uh, it, it is about enabling productivity in a sustainable way and, a, and a, a scalable way across the organization. And what IT for IT is really helping us is to, te is to tell a story and establish a brand for, would, for what will be a reasonably long and long tail of a transformation program. You know, while at a headline perspective, we're, we, we, we are achieving major things, but when you have a, a long tail of 6,500 services, 75,000 endpoints, you know, there, it, it isn't going to be a big bang overnight thing. Uh, things are going to take a while. Uh, take a while. Um, you know, what you know, Vodafone are a TOGAF organization. We 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 have embraced TOGAF uh, from an enterprise architecture practices perspective for for a long time. We are going through an enormous safe transformation where we're really trying to align the organization around value streams and and, and take some of the complexity of the organization but also be a lot more intentional and a lot more controlled around how we drive investment. And obviously, historically, we are, you know, we've embraced and, and leveraged ITO. Vodafone globally offer a variety of services, but offer business critical services, emergency services, and whether it's ITO or, or adjacent frameworks, 
you know, it's absolutely critical. Uh, and we really, we, we really live the standard and live the, the mindset of which I took uh, drives. And, and I think that's, the, you know, it, it's, it's the, it's the ever emerging new frameworks uh, and new trends in this sort of process ecosystem is where IT for IT has really helped us. And how we've been using IT for IT is to tell a story of an umbrella framework that ensures that these, that people are thinking about how these practices work together, that upfront, very early in the life cycle of a program, very early in the life cycle of a, of a product or of an initiative, that we're thinking about how to do this. As well, and most importantly, Vodafone as a telecom, uh, obviously we're, we're heavily engaged with TM Forum. Vodafone are one of the founding members of ODA for the Open Digital Architecture, which is the broader OSS, BSS, and digital architecture framework that we've adopted in uh, architecture framework that we've adopted in Vodafone. What we've done is we've embedded IT for IT into ODA. We've branded it as Voda or VODA, uh, and you know it, it's it's allowing us to tell a very consistent story around our, our overarching uh, direction of travel. At the same time, you know, I, I, obviously, I mentioned that we I, I, we we've incorporated IT for IT into Voda. Um, you know, Voda uh, or ODA or Voda together is a uh, it is the overarching reference architecture of Vodafone. What we use IT for IT is to describe an architecture vision or to act as a reference architecture for what an integrated DevSecOps tool chain, you know, starting from enterprise architecture, portfolio planning, all the way through to, you know, the, the, the services that are in production, enabling that transparency, enable that, enabling that traceability, enabling a common set of reference data, et cetera, et cetera. You know, Again, I, I quite like this slide. I quite like this view being a, a child of the 80s. I sort of see it as a game of Tetris, to be honest, where we're trying to connect things and where we're trying to, to, trying to create that full stack. Um, building on that reference architecture point, obviously here is a, a, standard, a relatively standard view of, of V3, of IT for IT. We in Vodafone are still using version two. Uh, I want to be very open with that. Some of the terminology you will see in the in the subsequent slides. Obviously, version three is has, has recently been released. Uh, we are doing a vast amount of work at the moment to, to in terms of uh, building a development pipeline for our people so that we can we can start to 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 embrace it at scale. Jumping on to the next stage around how we've used IT for IT or where IT for IT has really influenced us on the ground. IT for IT, building on what I spoke about with Voda and ODA, the, the top half of this diagram is a representation of how we're organized from a, a customer and partner segment, uh, you know, organized around hero user journeys, and then also the, the business value streams that we've that, that we've been defining in collaboration with, with, with TM Forum. You know, through, through the, the heart of that is our, our transformation and using ODA as a reference architecture. Whereby we have a late, where we've established a, a global portfolio organization acting as a lace to help bring, you know, and, and start looking at, you know, vertically integrated uh, value stream uh, design, spanning sort of operational value streams, development value streams, and then underlying platform value streams. And I think, so, you know, one of, uh, one of my colleagues created this view showing how IT for IT uh, and the full ecosystem of, IT, uh, of what IT for IT advocates underpinning what we want to achieve at scale in Vodafone and Vision IT. It's probably been one of our, 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 our crowning achievements, but, you know, you know, I think this is, this is usually important, obviously complemented by, by a high degree of OKRs. Um, jump on. Sorry, excuse me. And, and again, echoing that. So, you know, we are, you know, Rob, I think we'll touch on a bit of a, 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 a regular, questions around governance and what do we do and what, how do we achieve this? So obviously from an organizational perspective, we virtually, in terms of structure and value streams, we have executive sponsorship of each of these value streams aligned to our, our, our objectives as an organization. So from a strategy, strategy portfolio perspective, where new, man, where new demands come in, you know, what we really want to do is to target an understanding of the business, the impact value using data, in order to drive funding decisions, to allocate resources, to understand how it, how it impacts architecture. Really in this area, 
where IT for IT has helped us is again to talk about how we use data in order to make sure that key information is available to decision makers it, to ensure that that investments and funding and capital uh, capital investment is allocated in the right area. When it comes to existing products, when it comes to to allocating new features, safe underpinned by IT for IT, what we're really working on now is, as part of that broader shift from, from project to product is to work with our stakeholders on how, how to really balance, you know, incremental short-term one-off asks from, from stakeholder groups. How do we balance that relative to our own, our, our overarching strategic roadmap? Uh, and then obviously, Driving that through on how, how services are provisioned and then also from the zero touch operations in terms of, you know, you know, I touched on that we, you know, a critical differentiator of what Vodafone offers is, you know, highly available, highly available services and, and making sure that that, that, that we're, we're, we're operating effectively is absolutely huge and IT for IT really helps us tell that story. And ultimately, summarizing, maybe summarizing, get, wrapping things up, getting to a point where we've gone from. So, in, in terms of where we are today, so we've gone from a, a situation where we have had a large number of teams planning in isolation, and also and uh, and also on occasion developing their own tools and practices and processes. We, we've worked, and, and IT for IT has helped us, helped us tell a story to simplify and standardize around that. We've gone from sort of these platforms often being. So maybe second class citizens to establishing an internal engineering practice where we've insourced a vast amount of work, ramped up from you know a, a very small function to, to quite a large function. Um, for example, we're, we're working to consolidate uh, the number of portals, et cetera, et cetera, and we've established our, our IT for IT data lake. I'm jumping on to the final slide. So maybe I'm, I'm maybe I, I've tried, I've done my very best to keep this very, very practical around how we've uh, used IT for IT, and I wanted to finish things up around to talk about how did, how did we get started. And I think you know, this this very simple slide um, uh, sums things up quite perfectly. We, you know, instead of starting from scratch and establishing our own uh, reference architecture, we opted to use IT for IT in order to 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 to, to get things going. We we took a data driven approach to assessing where our maturity is across a variety of areas. And then we provided actionable insights uh, and that together with our product team, we built the roadmap that drove a set of short term improvements, quick wins in order to, to demonstrate immediate value. But it has also influenced what are probably four or five major portfolio epics in terms of our in terms of our, our program backlog that we are building out now and, and will continue to build out. We were, we're about a year into that journey. We, we, we reckon we have about a year or two left. And um, what I would say is, and what I really emphasize is. Building on that sentiment, uh, I, I don't want to suggest that we're we're done. I, I probably don't want to suggest that we're ever going to be done. Things are evolving and never evolving so fast. But what we're doing here and what we're doing with IT for IT allows us to constantly go back, reassess where we wanted to be, use data to assess and whether we've achieved that, and again to revise uh, and 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 to to, to reprioritize and, pre and and refocus. So. So with that, I want to thank everybody. Um, I, I appreciate your time, and if you have any questions either here or offline, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, Luke. I realise that that trying to cover such a huge body of work in, in uh, 15, 20 minutes is very, very difficult. And uh, But uh, the, the slides will be available for people, so you will get a chance to um, to dig into those um, and obviously the recording too. So um, we're going to go to Q&A without wasting more time um, with me speaking. So. Uh, joining us for QA um, in the familiar trademark jacket is Rob Agershook, who is the Senior IT Management Architect at DXC. He's also co-chair of the IT for IT forum within the Open Group, which is the group that uh, evolves and maintains the standard. Um, in his day job, he helps IT organizations to transform and become a lean and agile service provider, ready to manage the new digital ecosystem consisting of hybrid cloud and multi-vendor sourcing landscape. He's architecting the new IT organization, combining standards, practices, and concepts such as IT for IT, TOGAF scaled agile framework, DevOps, and continuous delivery security management with established IT service management methodologies such as ITIL. A lot of the things that you heard Luke talk about. So uh, that's how, uh, obviously, how Rob is involved here. So welcome, Rob. Thank you, Steve. Nice to be here. Um, quick, quick, uh, straight to a, to a question for you, Luke. Um, 
and it, and it's really around governance, but there's a there's a preamble. I, I understand that creating a holistic digital operating model across the end to end IT value chain is challenging, considering the various stakeholders involved. Can you explain more about the how governance was set up and how important is the right governance model? Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, look, I think firstly, it's about communication and knowledge sharing. I, I don't want to necessarily pretend that I do that quite well, but I think large chunks of our organization are, are aligned around the story and, and, and it's quite self-perpetuating at this stage, so that helps. But, you know, as a first part of call, Vodafone, as part of our technology strategy or Tech 2025, we have our tech guidance. And that that is a, a very clearly published set of technology standards that, that guides investment, uh, so that drives things in the right direction. How we've gone from 22 ITSS, ITSM systems to three is a big part of that, for example. Um, you know, in, in organizing and structuring around our, our value streams, we've not quite adopted the IT for IT value streams out of the, the box. We sort of a hybrid between two and three. Um, our members of our, our executive leadership team are effectively sponsors. Of, of of those value streams. So everything that's happening from a strategy portfolio planning perspective are are, are less, for example, are, 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 are the key epic owners, if you will, of that value stream. At the same time, you know, we have our target state. So we, we've done that maturity assessment. We have quite a robust data baseline of, of where we are and where we want to be. We, in our product roadmaps, in our, in our sort of conversation with our partners, in the definition of, of our OKRs, you know, at a, at, on a regular basis, whether through PIs or, or broader portfolio planning, we're constantly, or we're constantly trying to assess against data, how are we tracking our against our objectives and using sort of leading lagging, lagging indicators to see whether we're making the right decisions or not. So it's quite a broad a variety of, of levers that we use, but in between those maybe four or five main instruments, that, that's how we, we're, we're, we're maintaining our, our overall travel direction. Great. Okay. Yeah. So important. Um, Rob, if I can uh, bring you in, I mean, we've, we've heard, I mean, such a vote of in such a huge organization, a, a great example of, and Luke's just talked a, a bit about, about some of the benefits they've got from um, how they've used IT for IT. So how you've experienced in helping other organizations, obviously, how can others get started with, with using this, you know, there's so many things out there. How do we, how do we get started with IT for IT? Yeah, I think the Photophone case showed how Photophone has started. Is, I think a very good example. You start with basically looking at your current state, using IT for IT to look what good looks like, assess your current state, uh, co-create with different stakeholders, a kind of target state where you want to move to, and then create a sort of transformation plan. And IT for IT really helps you to define, you know, use it as an assessment tool where you are today, use it as a tool to define where I need to go to, and then basically guide you in the transformation. So this is a good way of how to use IT for IT. Yeah. Right. And get right. started. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let you, lets you gather where you are and gives you a, a, a path forward. Yeah. Gathering that stuff. Yeah, because but, IT for IT is, as a reference model really can be used as a kind of assessment. Okay, what do I have in place? What is missing related to data flows, end-to-end -end value streams, the capabilities, and then help you to basically look, get a better insight what what we have today. And that's the last slide that Luke shows as well. And yeah. then use it as a kind of guidance where how to what change and what what phase and what step to go to a more integrated uh, digital delivery model. Great. Okay. Um, one of the one of the things I'll, I'll come back to you, Luke, and maybe Rob, you have a comment uh, as well on this. But um, you know, merging practices, there you know different practices and standards that are out there. You you mentioned a few, um, you know, ODA and and obviously safe and you know DevOps approaches as well as IT for IT. How how did the IT for IT um, standard help you merge these together, Luke? I mean, look, I think sometimes it's as much about storytelling, right? I, I don't think anyone, you know, you know, maybe being link, able to link incidents and problems back to defects, uh, you know, you know, you know, so that ops and DevOps teams can can you know can collaborate. I don't think anyone objects to that, right? But I think you know, if I go into that that diagram showing you a fragmented estate, it's when you really go deep into that view relative to the number of services that we have. You know, when you're operating in, in a relatively federated nature with the working practices, trying to do that linkage uh, is quite interesting. I, I talked, I, I loosely talked about how when we started this, we had 23 
maybe two ITSM platforms, we're down to three, we would be down to one by the end of the year. But if you have multiple ITSM platforms with multiple team backlog tools, like that integrate, that's, that's, it's, a, it's, it's an integration nightmare, it's a data modeling nightmare, it's a reporting analytics nightmare, that there's, there, there, the, you know, where do you start? Um, you know, that, that type of emphasizing that type of problem, really using data to talk about that, IT for IT sort of helps us to tell a story and write actually, you know, again, we're not, we're, we're not advocating something new, we're not advocating something unique to Vodafone here, we're talking about something that the industry, that the major SIs, the major software vendors have, have, are advocating they're doing, this is what we need to do, uh, which ultimately the, the, the confidence that a predefined framework, if you will, gave meant that we, it was far easier to push on what it was effectively became an open door. Right. Make, uh, maybe I can add to that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I can add to that. I, I think organizations now realize they need to see it as an integrated system, a, a system approach from idea to production, all the feedback loops, uh, and to create a more integrated approach, like uh, thinking about how do you connect all the parts. And in the past, we have like architecture practice with TOGA, development, ops, security, risk, and compliance with different practices. But IT for IT can bring all this practice together in a more integrated system, right? An integrated digital platform that enables the team to deliver better value and safer and sooner, as Luke was also showing in his slides. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's getting that flow going that we hear you uh, sometimes sing about. Yeah. Make it flow. Yeah. yeah indeed. <laughs> make it flow. That's that's great. Gentlemen, I could talk to you guys all day about this, but uh, we'll, uh, we need to uh, wrap up in the interest of respecting everyone's time. But um, a huge thanks to you, to you both, for, um, Rob, for everything you, uh, you continue to do in the IT for IT forum and the open group. And, uh, and Luke, for joining us today and sharing Vodafone's experience. And um, as you said, you're not done yet. Maybe we'll never be done, but uh, maybe we could, uh, we could hear another, uh, uh, another time about how you how, what further progress has been made at some point so uh, let's stay in touch on that we'd love to do that uh, Stephen, thank you everyone yeah so thank you uh, very much for luke bradley and rob eckershook thanks guys so that's uh, that's it for today's topic folks as i said at the uh, at the beginning um we are going to uh, bring the regular Toolkit Tuesday to a close in two weeks' time. Uh, it doesn't mean we uh, we won't be back doing special episodes and things like that. It's as I say, it's taken on a a life of its own, and it's been uh, been such a great experience. And I think um, we hear great things about the value of of some of these uh, short and to the point talks and the presentations available afterwards. So, so uh, I, I think it's been great. Um, to to wrap it up. Um, we are going to do a slightly extended episode in two weeks' time, so August the 15th, where we will have um, a, a, a panel of uh, our resident experts on the show um, to, uh, to deal with the topics that we um, have uh, heard raised uh, multiple times over the, over the uh, various episodes. So do please um, join us in two weeks' time and get your uh, get your questions ready early. If there's anything that's gone on from uh, from pretty much any episode, then uh, do let us know. And of course, all of these are uh, are available, or nearly all of them are available for you um, on the Open Group uh, YouTube channel as well. So, uh, meantime, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks again to uh, to Luke and Rob for their insights, and uh, I wish you. Uh, um uh, wherever you are in the world keep safe and well and hope to see you in two weeks time i'm steve nunn this was toolkit tuesday <laughs>